Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. We are in Lhasa, Tibet, and this is an amazing city. It's a high elevation city. Uh, it is the center of culture and of importance in Tibet. And for this trip, we are staying at, it's, uh, the guest house is called Hangsuk Guest House. It is a traditional uh, boutique. Uh, it's actually an old Lhasa building in the old town. Um, that's been preserved, it's a courtyard, and so in this video I'm going to give you a full tour of our room walking around the hotel. It's really cool. And then after I give you a full tour, we might go have a little bit of dinner right in the old streets right here, just a little snack for dinner. Uh, but let's go inside, and first I'll show you around the, the courtyard bottom area. All right, so step into the, actually the walls are really thick, but step into the walls and you enter into this kind of courtyard section. There's a whole Tibetan courtyard with the, the surrounding buildings and I think there are rooms around the other side. But, oh, in the center now, it's an entire courtyard, but now it's kind of turned into a rose garden. There's a rose garden, there's some tables in here. You can sit, you can hang out, you can, I think there's even a bar over there, but you can also have breakfast in the center as well. Um, and if you look around though, I mean, you, the artifacts, they're real, they're original, the wood, the construction, the paintings, and I'll show you more of that as we get to our room. Uh, but first, I haven't even really been much around here, but let's go just quickly take a look at the bar and the restaurant. And then I'm not sure if you can hear the soundtrack, but they always have this kind of oldies soundtrack playing. I don't know if it really fits the Tibetan mood, but it's like John Wayne, and then they'll play like some techno all of a sudden, and then <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, but this courtyard, they've done a nice job with all the plants with all the the garden and greenery over here is a bar uh, which is always open and then over here if you come in here this is the dining room this is the restaurant this is where you can have breakfast um, yeah and there's tables around here but I love the the decoration the Tibetan decorations and paintings and colors and designs they're beautiful as we'll see throughout this entire guest house so from this side i'll walk back around the courtyard and i'll show you the kind of the reception area where you go over this side oh and the garbage pickup is here you gotta come check this out and you she just like called out the garbage pickup and she comes right here to pick up and then i guess this happens with all of the I think, I think this is with all the houses in the old city of Lhasa. They come with a push cart and they collect your garbage right here. We just happen to be here right at the right time. And then over this side, this courtyard, oh yeah, the cats. <laughs> Look at the cat. <laughs> you can come see the cat. Very playful cats. And then step into welcome to the inner courtyard and this is kind of the, actually they set up it set it up as the reception there's kind of a little coffee shop but I've never really seen it in use in the center and there's also another courtyard on the outside and just want to quickly point out there's just the preservation and the beauty of the paintings in Tibet and for sure everything has a meaning if you just go along these walls along these pillars along the all the wood and even, you can see that dragon even has texture. Look at that. And then over on this side, they set this up sort of as a, a reception area where you check in. And then just all over, there's Tibetan artifacts. I think they have the laundry room here. So this is kind of like some of the maintenance of the hotel. But then you step into this amazing courtyard here, and this is a beautiful courtyard. You can see the Tibetan prayer wheels on the second floor. And I'm not totally sure, I'm not totally sure what is the history of this uh, building of this ancient Lhasa building. Maybe it was just a house, maybe it was, I mean, it could have been a monastery or maybe a chapel, uh, but yeah, it's, it's well-preserved, it's beautiful, it's cool that they've kept the, the culture and kept the original um, artifacts and the original antiques of this place and, and then made it into a boutique hotel. But yeah, this, I like this courtyard a lot. And then from here, this is where you go upstairs to our rooms, to the upper levels of the, the guest house. I love this stone, pure stone too. We've been in Tibet now for, I think this is our third day. But the first day when we checked in, just coming up just one flight of stairs, I was like, oh, oh, 
Oh man, because of that elevation when you just fly, but I'm getting, I'm, I'm acclimatizing. Um, and so now I can, I can do the steps and to the third level. We're on the third level without taking a break, okay? <laughs> but actually, we're gonna stop on the second level and look around for a little bit. Actually, I haven't even been out here yet, but I think you can overview the entire courtyard, the bigger courtyard. Oh yeah, this is a great view. You can see over the, the it just looks like a carpet of the vines that they've grown in the rose flower garden, the carpet, and then you get more of an overview of the courtyard with the Tibetan design. All right, and then from here, our room is actually on the other wing, so we just came here to take a look at the courtyard from the top. We'll go back to our wing, and I'll give you a tour of our room. Yeah, but you get back here, and again, I'm not totally sure what this used to be, uh, but then you do get into the, you see the prayer wheels. We were down in that courtyard before, uh, but there are prayer wheels here. All right, and now let's go up the stairs to the third floor, which is where our room is. And this staircase is a wooden staircase. Oh, watch your head, by the way. Oh. Our room is over to the right-hand side, but again, I haven't even been down this side. Maybe we should just go check it out real fast. It might have a, a view as well. Hopefully it's open. Oh yeah, looks like that. Oh cool, I didn't know, oh nice, rooftop. Okay, there's not a whole huge view of the city because we're not that high, we're only three stories up. Uh, the buildings are kind of blocking it, but you can sort of see the mountains in the background. But well, this is just cool, a cool space for sure. And you can, again, you can see the courtyard on the bottom. And then our room is all the way down this hall, all the way at the end. But it's a very cool room and a very cool area. You don't want to lean on this rail too too hard or it could definitely collapse. It's, have, it's had some weather, so just don't lean on it too hard. Don't rely on it. There's a keypad access. All right, stepped inside. Welcome to our room. This is a huge room. It could easily be two rooms, but it's one gigantic room. There's two full beds. There's like multiple seating areas. Again, the traditional Tibetan style and design and paintings. And I mean, this is an entire traditional Tibetan uh, home. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a huge room. Okay, <laughs> I'll take off my shoes and I'll show you the whole thing. Begin on the right-hand side of the room. This is bed number one. And yeah, this, this, I mean, for sure, this could be a, its own entire room because there's a bed, there's some sofas, uh, there's an entire like center console as well. I've got to do my ritual. Oh, yes. Oh, that passes. Yes, the bed is very comfortable. Not too gushy, but perfectly comfortable. And you've got to have a thick blanket in Tibet as well. And I've been sleeping very well. Well, not that well. The first night, I, we, we didn't sleep that well, actually, because of the elevation. And you just kind of feel, you don't really feel out of breath when you're sleeping, but you do feel kind of like harder to breathe, less air, your throat feels dry, so I constantly have to drink water. Um, some people say they don't really sleep very well in high elevations because Lhasa is almost, it's right about at 12,000 feet. So it's very high in elevation. Uh, but other than that, then the next night and the next night I slept, yeah, much better. But that's because of the elevation, not the bed. And another thing they told us is to like elevate your head when you sleep as well. So I've been sleeping with two pillows. Maybe that like helps so not so much blood goes to your head when you sleep because of the elevation. Okay. You know those entire kitchen kind of center consoles? What are they called? Oh, um, uh, like a, an island, a kitchen island or a, a dining room island where you have like a whole cabinet in the center. That's kind of what this is. And this, uh, this room actually has one. There's a cabinet here. We've kind of filled it up with all sorts of our junk and little snacks. Moving over to the left side wing of the room. And this is like, again, this could be an ent another entire room, an entire suite uh, because this place has its own living room. And then the full sofa seat which this is a great place to chill also because there's also a lot of natural light coming from the, the top because there's a window opening up there as well. Over here you have another sofa seat and then another bed. I don't think we need to do the bed test again. I think it's the same exact bed. And then, yeah, it's just so much space. And then over here is the bathroom. The bathroom is kind of interesting. Possibly in traditional Tibetan homes, the bathroom maybe was outside or in a different section. So they might have had to be creative to kind of add bathrooms to this hotel. Uh, so they kind of made do with the space that they had, I believe. So that's why it's kind of 
it's a little bit strange, <laughs> but it's okay. Turn on the light. It's kind of a symmetrical bathroom, except on the left-hand side is the toilet, on the right-hand side is the shower, but there's two sinks, one on the other side. We'll start with the toilet. So the toilet is here in its separate little compartment. Well, I guess I'll just show you. So sit down on the toilet and you close the door and it's, it's a little bit see-through. I'm not sure why they chose glass for the bathroom door. Maybe something a little more private, but anyway. That's okay, um, because you are kind of sheltered from the entire room by the, the sink in design. But anyway, it's been, it's been fine for us. And then the other, the other side is the shower. So again, a sink on this side, and then the shower. I guess there's not a whole lot to say about the shower other than it's a shower, and it's been working well. Hot water, yeah, you gotta have hot water in Tibet, oh man, okay. And that's it for the shower and the bathroom. All right, and that completes this tour of our room in Lhasa, Tibet. And yeah, the spaciousness, of course, yeah, this could easily be two full rooms, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it is very comfortable. I'm sure it would be very warm in the winter because you can tell that the floors are heated. And yeah, we've fully enjoyed our stay here. Okay, there is one thing that I have to tell you that's not the best. Okay, it's terrible and that is breakfast that comes with the hotel. It includes two hot dogs and two pancakes. Uh, so not the best breakfast of any hotel that I've had. I think they could definitely improve the breakfast. They could, I mean, they could offer even Tibetan tea with uh, some of the Tibetan flatbread or some of the Tibetan, even like the yak noodles for breakfast would be excellent. And that's partly why instead of showing you breakfast in this video tour, I chose, actually it's the evening, it's almost 6 p.m. We're gonna go just down the street in this same neighborhood and probably just have a snack. I had a huge lunch, including a lot of yak cheese, yak butter and yak meat and sheep. Uh, so maybe not that heavy of a dinner, but We'll go see what we can find, something small. Other than breakfast that I think could majorly improve, everything else here has been fantastic. And then as we've been walking around this neighborhood, there's plenty of tea houses and little local restaurants. Uh, we've noticed this little restaurant right here, which I think it's a Tibetan noodle dish, but with chili oil and sauce. So we've all been looking at it. It looks like, I think it's just a small kind of a snack. So I think we're gonna try it. You guys want to try this? Yeah. All right. Hello, are you open? <laughs> How are you? Oh yeah, this place looks fantastic. Step inside, it is a little bit quiet right now and a little bit dark. But some of the restaurants here are kind of dark style, kind of like cavern style. I hope they're open, but somebody, there's definitely some evidence of some some remains. I got the noodles. Uh, mostly it was a choice between two different sizes of noodles, but she said the sauce is the same, so I got the thicker noodles. It smells really good. You can smell that chili oil. You can smell the maybe like sesame oil in there. There's peanuts. Um, and then I believe that they're mung bean noodles. But well, we're just trying to figure out the name of this dish. I'm not sure if it's laping, laping, or if it's a different dish. And there's some vegetables in here, the thick noodles. There's spring onions. There's peanuts. There's the the chili oil juice, and I think vinegar in here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really good. Kind of sour from vinegar, a little bit spicy, nutty, and then the noodles are just really like chewy noodles. No. For me, the flavor of the vinegar, plus the chili oil, plus the sesame seeds is very Sichuan tasting. But there is a lot of Sichuan food influence in Lhasa, especially as well. But rather than Tibetan, I think this is more Sichuan in flavor. That went down way too easily. And that is, yeah, that's just like a snacking bowl of noodles, but extremely tasty. And that makes me want to have another bowl. But if I didn't have a, a sheep's head for lunch and a bunch of yak, I definitely would have another bowl. But that, that I'm perfect right now. I should stop. That was delicious. Ah. 
yeah, the flavor, man, that chili oil. Highly recommended. I want to say a big thank you to Travel China Tibet, who are the ones who invited us on a trip to Tibet, because in Tibet, you have to actually have a permit to visit, and you have to be on a tour. A huge thank you to Travel China Tibet. They've been amazing, and um, they've arranged so many cool food activities for us. Be sure to subscribe to Mark Abroad. I'm going to be publishing more hotel reviews, more travel tips. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye from Lhasa. Whoa. Wow.